California's volcano shocks scientists. West Coast is on high alert. And what they're finding beneath Lassen Peak is rewriting everything we thought we knew about this sleeping giant. After 107 years of eerie calm, satellites reveal the entire mountain swelling. Seismic waves ripple through the Cascade Range, and deadly gases kill forests at its feet. These are the same warning signs that appeared before Mount St. Helens erupted. And now Lassen might trigger a volcanic chain reaction no one's prepared for. But what actually lies beneath? And how close are we to disaster? The answers begin with Lassen's hidden past, where centuries of silent power have shaped every risk we now face. 800,000 years ago, the land beneath what is now Northern California was unrecognizable. Lava surged from deep within the earth, building layers of rock and ash that would one day become Lassen Peak. Over centuries, the volcano did not sleep quietly. It erupted again and again, hundreds of times, each event leaving scars across a region that now spans more than 200 square miles. The Lassen Volcanic Center is not a single mountain, but a sprawling field of domes, craters, and shattered calderas, shaped by relentless cycles of construction and destruction. The landscape tells the story of chaos and renewal. The chaos crags, jagged and gray, rose from a violent eruption just 1,100 years ago. In 1666, the cinder cones sent rivers of black rock rolling across the forest, burying everything in their path. And in the early 20th century, Lassen Peak itself woke with a roar, spewing ash that turned midday skies to night and boiling rivers until they ran thick with mud. Survivors remembered the stench of sulfur and the ground trembling under their feet, echoes of the same forces that built this volcanic field. Every ridge, every hot spring, every patch of dead forest traces back to the restless energy below. The ground here is layered with evidence. Thick bands of pumice, twisted trees killed by toxic gases, and domes of hardened lava that once threatened to collapse without warning. Scientists have mapped more than a dozen major eruptive centers within this volcanic province, each one fueled by magma rising through a complex network of underground reservoirs. This is not a static monument. It's a living record of power, one that has shaped the region's rivers, forests, and even its weather. The scale is staggering, a volcanic system large enough to bury entire towns, with a history that stretches from the last ice age to the present. Understanding the risks that now haunt Lassen begins with its legacy, a landscape written in fire, ash, and stone. Beneath Lassen Peak, the story grows more unsettling. The ground above is only the final chapter, a thin skin stretched over a network of magma reservoirs stacked deep in the crust. Seismic imaging and gravity surveys reveal pockets of partially molten rock at depths between four and eight kilometers, sometimes as shallow as two. These are not empty caverns, but zones of crystal mush and hot, pressurized melt, fed by deeper conduits that plunge down 10, 15, even 20 kilometers toward the mantle. Every dome, every eruption, draws its force from these hidden chambers. The system is layered and restless. Shallow reservoirs, those perched four to eight kilometers down, are the most dangerous. When magma intrudes here, even a modest volume, just five hundredths of a cubic kilometer, can push the surface upward, deforming the landscape by measurable centimeters. That's the threshold scientists watch for, a sudden signal of new magma enough to trigger uplift, open fissures, and set off tremor swarms. If a shallow pocket fills too quickly, the overlying rock can fracture, unleashing gases and heat that boil groundwater and poison the soil above. Tree kill zones and glowing vents are only the visible scars of this hidden process. Deeper still, at 10 to 20 kilometers, broad feeders supply the upper system. These regions are harder to track, their signals often lost in background noise. But when magma from depth surges upward, it can recharge shallow reservoirs in days or weeks, setting the stage for rapid escalation. The architecture is not a single chamber, but a network, distributed, 
interconnected, and prone to sudden change. Detecting these shifts depends on a fragile web of monitoring. Satellites, GPS stations, seismic arrays. Each tool has its limits. Small or rapid intrusions may slip past unnoticed, masked by hydrothermal noise or gaps in coverage. The risk is not just what lies below, but how easily critical warning signs can be missed. In a system built on thresholds and tipping points, even a minor intrusion at the wrong depth could rewrite the future of the entire region. A decade of budget cuts has quietly hollowed out California's volcanic surveillance network. Across the Cascade Range, dozens of seismic and gas monitoring stations once watched for the smallest tremor or chemical spike. Now, many of those sensors have gone dark. In 2015, federal appropriations for volcano monitoring fell below half the requested amount, forcing the USGS and California Volcano Observatory to make hard choices. By 2018, field teams had decommissioned more than a third of Lassen's ground sensors. Some were dismantled outright, others left to fail as batteries died or data links failed. Remote outposts near Chaos Crags and Cindercone, critical for detecting early warning signs, were among the first to be abandoned. The loss wasn't just technical. Each missing station meant another blind spot in a system already stretched thin. Real-time GPS, INSAR calibration reflectors, and continuous gas samplers vanished from the field. The remaining network limped along, patching together coverage with aging equipment and sporadic maintenance. Reports from 2022 detail how teams sometimes waited months for replacement parts, while software updates lagged behind the pace of change underground. As the years passed, data gaps widened. When new activity began in early 2025, the first signals were faint, barely a blip on the surviving instruments. With fewer eyes on the ground, subtle warning signs risked slipping through unnoticed. The region's most dangerous volcano was now monitored by a skeleton crew, relying on luck and outdated tools to spot the next disaster before it erupted. A confidential memo circulated between field scientists and USGS leadership in late February 2025 carried a line that stopped several readers cold. Current sensor coverage is insufficient to guarantee early detection of magmatic intrusion at Lassen. The warning wasn't theoretical. Over the previous weeks, a handful of surviving seismic stations had picked up low-frequency tremors, signals that didn't fit routine patterns, but also didn't rise above the official noise threshold. Satellite snapshots showed a faint ripple of ground inflation near Chaos Crags. INSAR returns hinted at uplift, but the gaps in data made it impossible to confirm. One anonymous scientist, frustrated by the lack of action, wrote in the margins, we lost too many eyes on the ground. If Lassen blows, no one will say we were prepared. Inside the California Volcano Observatory, staff debated whether to escalate the alert. The official status remained normal, but field teams whispered about anomalies slipping through the cracks. A series of emails described unverified heat signatures and unexplained gas spikes, data that, in a fully funded network, would have triggered an immediate field response. Instead, the memo's authors urged caution, citing insufficient evidence for public alarm. Yet the private tone was urgent. Recommend immediate review of current hazard protocols. Potential for rapid escalation cannot be discounted. By early March, the memo had reached emergency planners in Shasta County. The language was careful but clear. The monitoring net was full of holes and subtle warning signs were at risk of being missed. For those reading between the lines, the message was chilling. The region's most dangerous volcano might already be stirring, and the people tasked with watching it were nearly blind. In a windowless office deep inside the Shasta County Planning Department, new maps began to circulate. Maps that never appeared in public briefings or press releases. The old hazard boundaries, once drawn tight around Lassen Peak and its immediate slopes, were quietly erased. In their place, a sprawling evacuation overlay stretched across seven rural counties, Shasta, Tahama, Plumas, Butte, Lassen, 
Modoc, and Sierra. Each line was traced not by guesswork, but by data. Ashfall simulations, wind models, and population grids pulled from the latest census. The numbers told their own story. More than 50,000 residents now lived inside the expanded high-risk zone, from the outskirts of Redding to the ranch lands east of Susanville. The new maps projected a worst-case scenario, with ash thick enough to ground aircraft and poison livestock drifting for dozens of miles. Entire school districts and elder care facilities appeared in the red blocks, each one flagged for priority evacuation. Rural roads once considered safe were now plotted as potential choke points, with alternate routes drawn in blue, corridors that could funnel thousands out of harm's way if the mountain erupted without warning. A county planner, sworn to secrecy, described the urgency behind closed doors. Every update meant more lives at stake, more communities to warn, more logistics to solve before the first plume ever rose. Officially, the region remained calm. But inside these planning rooms, the scale of the threat had already changed. The risk was no longer just a mountain's shadow. It had become a problem measured in miles, in families, in the silent lines redrawn across the heart of Northern California. Shasta County's new evacuation lines cut straight through communities that have called these forests home for generations. For the Atsugewi, Atsugewi, and Maidu, Maidu tribes, the land around Manzanita Lake is more than a park. It's sacred ground, woven with stories and rituals that stretch back centuries. Now, with closures looming and the risk of eruption growing, families gather on the lake shore for what might be their last ceremonies before the area is fenced off. Tourism, once the economic lifeblood of the region, is collapsing. Local guides cancel bookings as visitors vanish, and cabins sit empty beneath the pines. A lodge operator near the park entrance counts a 90% drop in reservations, his voice tight. We're bleeding dollars every day, but if the mountain wakes, this entire valley changes. The cost isn't measured in lost income alone. Hundreds of tribal artifacts are boxed and shipped to distant museums for safekeeping, breaking a chain of tradition that has survived fires, floods, and even the last great eruption. Elders speak of a promise to protect the land, but now that promise collides with the reality of evacuation orders and hazard tape. A tribal leader stands at the water's edge, watching steam curl from the far shore. Manzanita Lake is sacred. Closing it shatters our traditions, but saving lives is now the greater calling. His words echo across the empty campground, a reminder that for some, the danger beneath Lassen is not just geological, it's a threat to memory, identity, and the fragile thread that binds a people to their land. Satellites orbiting high above Lassen Peak began transmitting data that left scientists breathless. For the first time, two powerful imaging techniques, magnetotellurix and INSAR, were combined to peer beneath the mountain's battered slopes. Magnetotelluric surveys mapped the underground by measuring how electrical currents moved through rock, exposing pockets where molten material disrupts the flow. Meanwhile, INSAR tracked the ground itself, capturing subtle rises and falls in the surface, sometimes just centimeters, but enough to betray the slow force building below. The results were impossible to ignore. In the zone between two and five kilometers beneath Chaos Crags, the data converged, a shallow reservoir, warmer and more electrically conductive than anything recorded in decades, was pressing upward. INSAR showed the land swelling by nearly half a meter in places, a sign that magma, or superheated fluids, were forcing their way into new territory. The shape of the uplift matched the outline of the low resistivity zone revealed by magnetotellurix. It was as if the Earth itself had started to breathe. This synergy between imaging methods did more than just confirm the swelling. It gave scientists a precise depth for the intrusion, narrowing it to a corridor where even a small increase in melt, just a fraction of a cubic kilometer, could tip the system toward eruption. For years, models predicted that any intrusion at this level would deform the surface. 
but to see it happen in real time was another matter entirely. The mountain was not just restless, it was changing shape under the weight of something new. The evidence was now visual, measurable, and urgent. No longer just whispers from failing ground sensors or rumors from the field. This was proof, pixel by pixel, of magma on the move. The question was no longer whether Lassen was waking up, but how close it now stood to the threshold that separates unrest from disaster. Dr. Elena Ruiz, a USGS volcanologist, watched the satellite data stream across her monitor with a growing sense of dread. She later described the moment in a private email. The inflation anomaly appeared as a bright ripple on INSEAR, spreading over chaos crags like a bruise. Within 72 hours, our advisories escalated from routine to urgent. I pressed for public notice. Upper management stalled, citing insufficient evidence. By week's end, the satellite showed a dome swelling half a meter. That half meter of uplift was more than a technical detail. It was a warning sign that demanded action. Ruiz's team worked late into the night, recalculating hazard models and running worst-case simulations. The numbers forced a difficult conversation with emergency planners. A swelling of this magnitude, at such shallow depth, could mean magma was rising faster than anyone had anticipated. The risk wasn't just theoretical anymore. It was mapped onto real communities, real evacuation routes, and real lives. Ruiz's insistence on transparency put her at odds with the official line. While the public alert level stayed green, her internal bulletins grew sharper. She flagged the need for immediate review of hazard protocols and pushed for expanded evacuation overlays. Her colleagues debated the evidence, some urging caution, others warning that delays could cost precious time. The urgency was no longer just about scientific curiosity. It was about protecting people who had no idea their safety depended on a handful of contested satellite images. Behind closed doors, Ruiz's emails triggered a ripple effect. County planners began quietly updating evacuation maps, extending red zones across seven counties. School districts and hospitals were added to priority lists. The cost of waiting grew heavier with each new data point. Ruiz's voice, once just another expert in a crowded field, now shaped decisions that could define the fate of entire towns. In the shadow of Lassen Peak, science was no longer just observation, it was the difference between warning and disaster. California's volcano shocks scientists. West Coast is on high alert. And what they're finding beneath Lassen Peak is rewriting everything we thought we knew about this sleeping giant. After 107 years of quiet, satellites confirmed half a meter of uplift across Lassen's summit. Seismic records from the last six months show tremors spreading far beyond the volcano itself, echoing the pattern that preceded Mount St. Helens in 1980. Newly released geophysical imaging has revealed a melt-rich zone just two to five kilometers below the surface corroborating the warnings of local planners and the confidential memo that forced seven counties to redraw evacuation routes. Yet, key data remain classified, and scientists admit they cannot predict if or when a major eruption will occur. The facts are clear. Lassen Peak is active again, and the changes are measurable. Communities, emergency planners, and researchers are watching every signal, knowing that history and science both point to the same conclusion. California's sleeping giant has awakened, and its next move will shape the fate of the West Coast.